I want to do it something a little bit different for Parshas Shlach. Taking on a very difficult topic, the topic of bitachon. Does having a bitachon mandate being an optimist? Does it mandate expecting the good to happen to oneself? So it ties into the Parsha, because in Parsha Shlach we have the story of the Miraglim, that the Jewish people send spies to spout Eretz Yisrael for them. And we know that these were some of the greatest people in the Jewish people chosen for this job. And at the same time, it seems that they made an error which changed the history of the Jewish people. It brought about a Bechia Adoros, the concept of Tisha B'av, a whole different existence for the Jewish people. At the same time, these were from the greatest people in the Jewish people. And we find that Rashi tells us that Yeshua's name was originally Hosea bin Nun, and Moshe added a Yud onto his name. It's to be, Ko Hoshiach HaMetas Meraglim. May Hashem save you from the Meraglim's plans. Find similarly, Kalev, the other spy who stood by the test, that he went to Davin, it says he went to Hebron by himself, in Chazal, just to Davin by the Maras Hamach Pela, that Hashem should protect him from what the Meraglim were trying to do. So if Yeshua and Kalev needed this extra special tefillah, it must have been a very, very difficult test. So what was the test? What were the Meraglim going through? It's a very complicated topic. It seemed, I don't fully understand the Sam Derech's approach to it, but Rav Chazal's basic approach is that the Jewish people, until now, they'd been in the Midbar living on miracles. So they obviously knew Hashem was all capable and capable of taking care of them. And so they know that they could conquer Eretz Israel if Hashem wanted them to. But they were concerned about the sins that they did on Vavodah Zarah in Mitzrayim. And they felt that they knew they were going to be entering a much more Derech Hateva way when they entered Eretz Yisrael. So when they saw the power of the Canaanim, they said, we're not going to have the Schusim. Hashem is not going to make the miracles for us that we'll be able to conquer Eretz Yisrael. We're going to be wiped out. So in a sense, it was coming from a tremendous year Yiraschet, appreciating the severity of what sin is and what it could do to a person's potential to get what they're trying to get. And it also came from a appreciation of the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael. We know the Pasuk says, If a person's not worthy, Eretz Yisrael spits them out. So there was a certain sense, he frames it as, that they were now swi- the switch from living on miracles to now living in the, na- in, in the way of nature, that this was something that they just they made a calculation that they would not be worthy of being able to take Eretz Yisrael, and then better off that they should turn around. And it was something which Yeshu and Kalev needed tremendous siyat d'shmaya to avoid falling into, and it's something that they brought the entire Jewish people on board with, and it brought them, it brought this tremendous downfall. This concept of Shema Yigrom Hachet, this fear that maybe we'll do the wrong thing and we'll be punished accordingly, since we find it by Yaakov Avinu, it's a difficult concept, but it's very important for us in our world not to fall into that trap. The Chovas Havavos, when he goes through the seven criteria for bitachon in Hashem, one of them is to appreciate that what we have is all Hashem's chesed. Everything we're getting is Hashem's chesed. Nothing to do with whether we're doing good things, bad things. It has nothing to do with our deserving it. And it's very important to feel that way. Because a person will say, well, yeah, I have bitachon that Hashem would do good things for me, but I don't deserve it, and therefore I'm not going to have good things. So when I walk down the street, I expect bad things to happen, because I'm an Eisvarf. So a person needs, part of having bitachon is knowing that everything comes because of Hashem's chesed. It has nothing to do with our deserving of it or not. I think sometimes we get stuck there. So in the topic of bitachon, I wanted to touch on, I'll give you an example. I was in Eretz Yisrael recently. So I had trouble with the GPS. I had the basic instructions of how to go. And I'm on the road, and I don't really know where I'm going. And it's very scary. You're driving, you know, you could drive, or so you could drive a long time without knowing where you're going. So I was wondering, very stressful experience. You know, am I going to end up in a weird place? Am I going to get where I need to go by the Zman for Shachris? So what does Bitochon dictate? Does bitoch, a person who has Bitochon, would you say, so I have Bitochon, then Hashem will help me get to my destination in the proper way, and everything will work out smoothly. Or is Bitochon, I don't know if Hashem will help me get to my destination. But what if, if I don't get to my destination, so I also trust in him. If I end up in a crazy place, I also trust in him. Is that bitachon? Which one is bitachon? Can a person, does bitachon dictate this optimism, forgetting self-confidence, forgetting just optimism, pessimism? Does bitachon dictate that we should think good things will happen to us? So there's an interesting Gemara in Brachos on Daf Samach and Aleph. It started with Hillel Hazakin. Hillel was on the road and he heard a cry in the city. He said, I trust this come, not coming from my house. And on it, the Pasuk says, 
From bad tidings, one does not fear. When one's heart rightfully trusts in Hashem. Rava says, you could read the Pasuk both ways. You read it front to back, it's accurate. From a bad thing, a person doesn't fear. Why? Because he has bitachon Hashem. Because he trusts in Hashem, therefore he doesn't feel bad things. He says, the other way to read the Pasuk is also an, appro- is also an emistic of art. A person has proper, his heart has proper trust in Hashem, and therefore Mishmuel will ra'a will yira. Therefore, he doesn't fear bad tidings. That the bitachon itself is a schus that he shouldn't fear bad tidings. The bitachon itself leads him not to fear bad tidings. And this actually, this is a very strongly held sheet and bitachon. I believe the briskers held this way. Sir Yisrael Salanter held this way. From the start with him and the Rashash and the watch that. Bitochon, a person can believe, should believe good things will happen to him. And in fact, to the level that a person can be boteach, that specific good things will happen to him. And the bitochon is a schus, that it will happen to him. If a person is on the madrega, then he'll be zochet to it in the schus of the bitochon itself. And Rav Shai Cohen talks this way, and the Sefer Madrega Sa'adam of Nevardik and Yudah Mandel speak this way. A person has to be on the madrega for the right, for the schus, but the more a person is boteach, the more a person trusts in getting good things, the more it will be a schus for him. The Chazanish famously writes that he's not a fan of that sheet. So the Chazanish, and then Muna Bitochon says, Bitochon doesn't mean that I know what's going to happen. I'm not a Navi. How do I know what's going to happen? Bitochon means I trust that whatever is going to happen is what Hashem wants, and Hashem is in control, and that that's the best. But the truth is, what does that mean? So then what am I, so I have a Muna that Hashem runs the world, but if I'm nervous, so then, so how does the Bitochon help me with that Menucha Sanefesh? I think even according to the Chazanish, I think there's a basic trust in HaKadosh Baruch Hu that good things are going to happen. That Hashem is going to bring me bracha. I think it's mavur in the Svarim that the bitachon leads to a better outcome when I trust. I was thinking about in our lives when we have people that we trust. Do we know with Nivua that the person that we love won't do something to it? Can a person, we said in the Amanas Kenshimus, can a person ever know anything a million percent? We can never know anything a million percent. But we have a basic confidence, a basic trust in people who we believe in that good things will come from them and that they'll be good to us. So we said that same relationship, we trust that Hashem will be good to us. If something happens, then we have to work through that with our relationship with Hashem and understand why Hashem would maybe give us challenges. But the bitachon is a schus for good things to happen to us. For Shmuel Hamaner in the mitzvah Sabitochon, he says that it's like any other mitzvah. A person puts on fill and he gets a, he gets a mitzvah. A person is boteach v'akadosh baruch that a sick person will be healed. So even if it doesn't work out that way, he gets the schar on the mitzvah Sabitochon, just like he would get schar for putting on fill and for sig and yasoka. The Vilna Gon actually says about that Gemara in Brachos. He asked this Kashi, he says that how could he know for sure, you know, sorrows happen, even to tzaddikim. How could he know that it wasn't a cry in his house? So he said, someone understand this Gemara, that it means that the cry, that he knew it wasn't a cry in his house because he knew the bitachon and emuna of the people in his family, that even if there was a tzara, that they wouldn't cry out in that kind of a way, that they would be able to handle it knowing that it was for the best. He says it's not so master from the language of the Gemara. The Gemara makes it clear that he knew that the bitachon was a schus for him, that it wouldn't happen in his house. So the Vilna Gon says that, yes, he was boteach, that it wasn't in his house. So I, we find Sadiqim and Tzoros. Depends on how great a person's bitachon is. If a person has a great enough level of bitachon, it can really serve him as that type of a protection. So I think we have to be realistic about our own level of bitachon. But I definitely think that it's mavur from the Svarim. This idea that bitachon is a schos for us, and that when we trust in Hashem for good things, is definitely this idea of kaveh Hashem, we hope to Hashem for good. And there's a higher level of boteach v'ashem. When we actually trust in Hashem that things will be good, when there are challenges, then we deal with them. But we have this basic concept of bitachon, of believing that good things will happen to us and out of Hashem's great kindness to us, believing in Hashem and thereby expecting good and thereby living a happy, optimistic life. May Hashem help us do something. May Hashem bring us simcha and bitachon and connection time. Have a wonderful Shabbos.